Okay, so I've wanted to make a video like this for kind of a while, um, how to make a Pokemon Sun and Moon team, just because people have been asking a lot of questions, you know, in my like in my comments, um, even on Showdown, I've been getting PM stuff like this, hey, can you look at this team, help me with this team, and that kind of thing, and you know, I love doing those competitive analysis type videos, so I figured how to make a Pokemon Sun and Moon team would be pretty good, uh, like a pretty good idea. In the past generations, like Oras and stuff, I didn't build too many teams just because, like, you know, I didn't really enjoy the generation that much, and it's just easier to win with, like, Keldeo, Latios, Landorus, so I just used all of those over and over again. But in Sun Moon, like uniqueness is a lot more like presented. You can use a lot more like fun stuff and get away with it, and it actually works, which is really, really nice because I love creativity in a you know a new gen. So um, with this team um, that we're gonna build today, uh, pretty much just kind of showing you guys how to build a team. I guess we can start with a focus if I'm sort of build a team, and I guess I'm gonna go with the direction of bulky offense. Um, I mean, you can go with anything, like when you build a team, stall, balance, offense, I mean, hyper offense, uh, bulky offense, but in my opinion, bulky offense has always been the best sort of team style because you can play uh, prediction heavy or read heavy and just kind of get a really big initiative on your opponent in the first few turns, or, you know, if you play a little reserved, you always have, like, those Pokemon in, on your team that can kind of get you out of mistakes, like the bulkier pivots and that kind of thing, so if you do mess up once or twice, you know, it's not an automatic lose. Like, if you mess up with hyper offense, for example, you're fucked if you mess up, like, one or two turns because it's hyper offense. You don't have the time to mess up. Like you have to play perfectly if you're gonna use hyper offense, which is why it's one of my favorite play styles because it's so much fun and like high paced. But bulky offense is nice because even if you mess up, you can get yourself out of that hole. So you know, for you know, let's say for this team, um, we're going with bulky offense direction. We have to find you know kind of a focus to the team, right? When I build teams, um, I don't really ever have a focus. I kind of just put a bunch of good stuff together and then I see, wait, even though they're all good by themselves they're not all good together let me fix this up so that's kind of how i build teams but for this sake you know i can make a team with a general focus in mind so say we want to use you know a big threat in the metagame how about ash Greninja? so obviously that thing you know is very very strong we can use that as a focus i would consider this thing to easily be top five in the metagame um it's extremely strong extremely fast uh, i mean i guess it's annoying that it has to get the kill to pretty much change into this form but i mean it's like y'all have seen my streams or like my showdown lives like the damage and just shit this thing can do is out of this world it's so good so uh, we'll run the spec set that is my favorite set by far um just because i don't like taking recoil with this thing and you know specs gives it the ability to hit really hard water shuriken with choice specs is absolutely like brutal the the damage it does is stupid um for those of you who don't know like it does like 80 percent to genesect with water shuriken so two stealth rock switches from genesect and it's finished one switch into uh, lander's t you turn like so rocky home it takes damage finish like it's very 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 solid dude um i really love this pokemon the speed is fantastic as well because um you know like the name the the one thing you see in there is like tapu coco with the 130 speed so then when you get the uh the change off you know you're faster than it Feramosa, obviously but i mean that thing gets murked by water sure again and yeah oh that's another thing i wanted to address in this video people are like how do i deal with tapu lele genesect Feramosa? i'm gonna answer all that because honestly they're not as bad as you think they are so if we're going with a bulky offense approach we got to think okay what next step do we want for this right um, so, you know, you have some, you have to, you have to think, what does Ash Greninja tr have trouble with? Well, obviously it has trouble with stuff like Rotom, uh, Tapu Fini, um, Scarf Genesect maybe, because that can force it out, stuff like that. So you want to think, okay, how can I sort of beat those Pokemon while also, you know, kind of keeping a defensive approach? You don't want to just put like, like something that obviously doesn't, because if I did like, because look, if I wanted to beat like, um, Tapu Fini and Rotom, what could I do? I mean, look, there's like a, a lot of electric types, but you don't want to just put something that kind of does a redundant role with Ash Greninja, you know what I mean? I don't want to put like a Tapu Koko, which does the same role, a fast, strong special attacker, because if I put that, then okay, then I'm probably going to go into that offensive, you know, um, like that hyper offensive role. So say, you know, we want to put some defensive capabilities on it, so we can go with a Heatran. So Heatran, obviously, you might be thinking, wait, how does that be Rotom or Tapu Fini? But we could run the Grassium Z Solar Beam set. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that does, um, and I'm pretty sure most people do by now because I think it's been a pretty common set on the ladder, one of the most known Z moves. Uh, it's a 190 base power first turn grass move, capable of just instantly o calling Tapu Fini and Rotom, which is very, very nice. Uh, this set's also good because you run Magma Storm to pretty much trap that shit in, and it's pretty much dead. Um, and then yeah, you can run Earth Power here, and then last move, you can run Hidden Power Electric. I like Hidden Power Electric because it deals with Mantine, which is one of, if not the best counters to Greninja. I don't honestly consider Mantine to be very good um, anymore. It was a way cooler in the beginning, but I guess this beats like like Pelipper. I, I mean, you you can run Rocks too. It doesn't really matter what you run, but say say we run this set, all right? Let's just say. We can always change back, right? So now you have a pretty good, you know, offensive core of sorts. Um, I mean, they do have some problems. For one, they're both fighting weak. Uh, there's no real ground switching and that kind of thing. But for now, it's a pretty good core because Heatran is getting rid of the Pokemon that would rather, like, annoy Greninja. It also gets rid of stuff like Ferrothorn and just nuisances like that, you know? 
So it's a nice Pokemon to have. Not to mention Heatran can also switch into so many freaking moves because of how good its typing and defenses are. I mean, Heatran is everything that can go right with a Pokemon, honestly. It's always been a beast, and it's literally never going to fall off, ever. It's always been the most annoying Pokemon, too. The Spadef set, when you have that Lava Plume per cover, I mean, Lava Plume, uh, Lava Plume Protect, oh my god, it's, it's a frustration, bro. But let's think now. Um, if we look, so we do have some problems, right? The Lander's problem is obviously a nuisance. Um, the fighting weakness, so stuff like Pheromosa could obviously be trouble. Um, there's no actual good water switch, and still, I mean, Heatran does lure these things in, but it's not like I'm throwing Heatran in the way of a Rotom, or, like, even a fellow Ash Greninja, or just a regular Specs Greninja. I can't just be switching my Greninja into Hydro Pumps. It's gonna get blown away, so, obviously, that's a problem, right? So, you know, we want to think, what can we do? If we're running a bulky offensive approach, we can run some sort of defensive option to deal with this. So, we can go with a Venusaur. Now, I have never been the biggest fan of Venusaur, but in this metagame, specifically Sun and Moon, I've been convinced of its power. It's, it's pretty wild. Um... Honestly, the reason I like this thing so much now is because burn is 6.25%, uh, 6 which is really, really, really nice, dude. Just because last time in uh, RS, uh, it was harder because, you know, Rotom would burn you, then rocks would go up, and then you'd come in and you'd take like 25% from all that shit. And then it would just be so hard to continue to be good because Keldeo was Scald burn you. And like Venusaur, yeah, you can eat the hits, but you're getting worn down. 12.5% plus rocks is really unforgiving, man. Like, it's so hard for Venusaur to, like, you know, it's hard for Venusaur to make a living out here when, you know, that kind of stuff is happening. But the 6% is very, very nice. Keldeo is now pretty much dead in the metagame, which is also very nice because Scald, in general, has dropped in, like, half of usage when that thing disappeared. Um, but yeah, so basically what this thing does for us is it gives us a good, you know, sort of pseudo ground resist to stuff like, uh, you know, defensive landers, T. It can obviously eat that hit up. Um, not to mention it gives us a solid uh, Rotom counter uh, water resist in general. I mean, Specs, Ash, uh, Specs Greninja, um, the Ash form, I think, has an easy time to a killing Venusaur. But the regular form, um, you know, all you have to do is run like, I'm pretty sure it's like 236 HP, uh, 20 Spadef, and even with Rocks Up, Greninja cannot to a KO with Specs Dark Pulse, which is really, really nice. Um, I mean, speed wise, you know, I'd probably want to hit 201. Um, and then, you know, special attack, you know, this will hit like 359. Oh, 371. Good God. So, yeah, obviously, it's a very, very strong threat to have on your team. Um, it's very, very strong. Defenses are also extremely nice. 282, 281. Like, that's like, it's absurdly strong and um, absurdly bulky. It's just. It's a very nice Pokemon to have in the metagame right now, honestly. Not to mention, it can deal with Pheromosa very easily. You can run some defensive EVs if you want, but Life Orb U-Turn in general doesn't even really hit Venusaur that hard, and that's the best move it can go for. Life Orb Bug Buzz isn't really a thing, unless they're like Specs, in which case, okay, I guess then they have you beaten, like, but obviously that's rare set as well. Um, Pheromosa, and in fact, it's even weaker than Genesect, honestly, because Genesect at least gets the attack boost. Um, that's what I'm saying. Pheromosa is kind of overrated, but whatever. So say we run Sludge Bomb. Uh, Giga Drain, HP Fire, and then Synthesis. This set is nice because, you know, it kind of deals with Ferrothorn as well, which, you know, could be an easy, uh, easy, I mean, hard for Greninja to deal with. Um, it can deal with fellow grass types, even though, I mean, they're getting smashed by Sludge Bomb. But yeah, this set in general would be really, really nice for this team because, you know, it's a good pivot to have. It hits everything hard. Um, yeah. And it also works as like an electric resist too. Tapu Koko, one of the offense's most annoying things to deal with. You know, it cannot beat Venusaur. Unless you're running that Life or Brave Bird, in which case you're just going to kill yourself. But it's still, you know... Venusaur is very, very nice. It has all those defensive capabilities. It walls so much in the metagame, dude. Like, like just looking through some of this stuff. Genesect, for example, you know, it can't really break uh, this thing unless it gets, like, a unless it's, like, banded, in which case Iron Head to a KOs. Uh, Spec, in which case Bug Buzz is going to blow you away. Life Orb can't beat you unless it's, like, a Life Orb max special attack Bug Buzz and it gets the plus one special attack boost, which it doesn't. Um, so, yeah. Genesect obviously has a little bit of trouble. Greninja, like I said, can't really break it. Pheromosa can't. Um, stuff like Metagross obviously has a decent time breaking it, but I mean, um, Excadrill, for example, can't do it. Magearna, one of the most annoying Pokemon ever because it's so good defensively and it's so strong, cannot touch Venusaur. I mean, you can go for Flash Cannon trying to get special defense drop, but that's special defense drops, but that's about all you can do. Uh, Manaphy, you know, that thing obviously isn't breaking it. Everyone thinks like the Rain Dance uh, Hydro Vortex set, including myself. I think that set's Beast. But of course, it cannot break Venusaur because of the, the, the defenses it has, and Giga Drain will just blow it away. Um, Venusaur, you know, it can check Kartana and just blow the thing away with HP Fire. Um, Tapu Bulu, you know, it can't break it. And then again, its defensive purposes, you know, let it be able to take on Tapu Fini and stuff like that. So, again, as long as your opponent isn't rocking some, like, Heatran Marowak combo, Venusaur is going to do well versus basically any team you use it against. It's a very nice Pokemon. So now we sort of have to think, okay, what kind of direction do we want now? Uh, we're missing Stealth Rock, we're missing a Sturdy Ground Resist, and obviously those are some problems. So, you know, it's pretty obvious what you want to put next, right? Stealth Rocks, 
near ground resist oh, i mean like i mean like we have the god right here defensive lander is t so this thing is was like the best pokemon hands down in omega ruby alpha sapphire and it's coming again in sun moon to basically be the best again it it's literally the best again in sun and moon because it's it's so it's so dumb it walls everything its ability is busted it's so strong it gets access to rocks like rocky helmet landers t will forever be the greatest pokemon of all time like it's god i like I, it hurts me to run choice scarf landers at times because i can't run defensive landers and even then scarf landers is super sick too so you know we run this set right you turn knock off stone edge i like stone edge just because i will never lose to a pincer all right i will never lose to pincer i'm not running bullshit knockoff all right it's just no i will never run knockoff wait i'm not going right here where are my rocks at oops <laughs> hey yo ignore that but um i mean you can run whatever you want i just I really prefer Stone Edge because I do not, I never want to risk it for the pincer. Um, so yeah, um, okay, so we have that, 252, 8, Impish. So obviously what Lander's T does for us is it gives us one, uh, some U-turn, Volt turn kind of shit. So you know, if they bring in a Rotom or a Bulky Ground type um, and we predict their, that it's coming in, you can U-turn, you know, into Venusaur or Greninja respectively. And obviously that helps a lot because initiative has been made. Damage is going to go down. If you have rocks up, you know, they're going to keep switching into hazards and that kind of thing. It gives us Stealth Rocky, which is a necessity to any team in general. Um, and you know, it just beats so many like big offensive threats. Earthquake, Charizard X. Um, it can kind of sort of check Metagross if Metagross isn't running Ice Punch. Um, Buzz Wolf, for example, isn't running uh, Ice Punch very often anymore. They're more into the sub three attack set with Horn Leech, uh, Focus Punch, and Earthquake. Um, it can deal with other offensive Landers T. It can deal with Excadrill and that kind of thing. Garchomp. It's just Landers T is such a nice Pokemon to have. I don't have to guess this thing up. Everybody knows what it's capable of doing, which is walling the entire meta game. Like it's. <laughs> It's a dumb Pokemon, man. So, you know, we have that Pokemon, right? Now, if we look at the team, now we're... Okay, we have some, like... Even our defensive Pokemon, like Venusaur and Landorus, are obviously a little offensive because they hit so strongly. Um, but, you know, we have some problems. One, we're not a very fast team. Greninja is the fastest Pokemon, and the second fastest is Heatran, which is obviously a problem. So, you know, you're going to want some more speed on that team if we're going with such a bulky offensive approach. You're going to need some kind of glue Pokemon, you know, that can deal with those faster threats. Say someone brings something like a Mega Alakazam. What am I going to do? Like, obviously that could be a problem. So, you know, maybe we're going to want to put some speed on here. So, when it comes to Scarfers, uh, a couple of options usually jump in my head immediately. You have Genesect, which you can run at Choice Scarf, or you have um, Tapu Lele, which you can run at a Choice Scarf, right? Uh, both of these are very good Scarfers. Tapu Lele is probably better, in my opinion, even though Genesect is faster and all that. Genesect can do so much in the metagame. Let's face it, it's flat out broken. That running Scarf, in my opinion, is just not using its abilities. Like, it's not using it to its fullest potential. Life Orb, Specs, and Ban Genesect destroy this game. So, it's it's only right, you know, that we give it a set of, like, that caliber instead of wasting Scarf on it, in my opinion. If we go with Scarf Tapu Lele, this thing is also busted because it's just... It comes with Psychic Surge, obviously, so, you know, it's hitting 1.5 times as hard already. It's extremely, extremely strong. Um, offense in general is hard pressed to find a good switch in against this. Most people, including myself, use a, you know, like a Metagross, and even then, if they Shadow Ball you on the first switch, and you take like 60 to 70 percent, then they're just gonna spam Psychic Clean from then on, and you're pretty much fucked. Like, it's. Tapu Lele is so dumb to deal with. I really hate playing against it so much. God forbid I play against Specs. I remember one time I ran Stall and my opponent ran Specs. Oh, that was the last time I ran Stall. Oh my god, crushed, crushed, dude. One of my chances, Side Shock doing like 75%. What do you do? What do you do? Like, this thing is so good. <coughs> and Scarf only makes it better just because, you know, you deal with offense so easily. Um,. While also just being a good Gloomon in general. So I think Choice Scarf Tapu Lele actually kind of looks nice on this team. It gives us another Dragon Resist as well. You know, which is just nice in general if you don't want Heatran to keep coming in on these. Because Heatran in general kind of loses to Latios with this set. I mean, they just roost off the hits and that sort of thing. While Tapu Lele can come in pretty easily, scare that thing out with a Moonblast. Um, you know, it kind of resists all its moves. Um, so yeah, on a set like this, you'd want to run Psychic, Moonblast, Blast. HP Fire, uh, Shadow Ball probably. So, you know, that would be your set. And obviously that works very, very nice on this team. So, let's say we get rid of Genesect. Now, we gotta think, hmm, what else do we want on this team? Well, honestly, uh, some defensive shit could end up being a problem. Cores in general. Like a Venusaur, uh, like a Heatran of its own actually looks kind of annoying to this team, if we're being honest. Like, Heatran, if it has Earth Power, is going to merc our own Heatran, because ours has to win a speed tie. It deals with Venusaur, Landris isn't coming into those fire moves very easily, Tapu Lele is basically walled, and Greninja isn't really a switch into fire type. So we gotta think, hmm, well what switches into Heatran? Well, we can do stuff like a Life Orb EQ Latios or something like that, but that's obviously not, like, 
compressing the rolls. For one, that gives us another bulkier water resist to Rotom and ship, but we don't really need that when we have a Venusaur. Tapu Lele and Greninja already are fast special attackers, so Latios is also kind of outclassed in that fact, just because Lele and Greninja are both stronger than that thing. So we gotta think, hmm, what doesn't kind of do you, you know, have a redundant role with the team? Well, if we're, our focus is breaking things, right? And Greninja obviously can't break things till it gets off the Mega Evolution. I mean, not the Mega Evolution, the form change. So we gotta think, what can break those things, like, for Greninja? If, if we have a Pokemon that can basically get everything to, you know, around 60-50%, well, then it's gonna, obviously gonna be harder for um, the opponent to find things to bring into Greninja, because it's going to get the form change off eventually, and you can only stall it for so long. Also, if we have a Pokemon that can bring Pokemon low, Scarf of Lele is going to go ham and just sweep through everything. Because Lele is one of those Pokemon that is uh, very successful at doing like 50, like 40% to resist and like 80% to non-resist. But what if all those Pokemon are already at 40% 80%? Well, it's just going to clean flat. So if we're looking for a Pokemon like that that can just break through things, you know, we have a couple of options. Um, looking at it, you know, we have stuff like Feromosa, which is obviously good at breaking through holes, but I don't really want to use that thing, just because it doesn't really offer anything defensively, um, it's very easy to force out, it's annoyed by stuff like Amoongus, and like Venusaur, and Lander's T, if you're U-turning and you get worn down and stuff, um, and you also can't really afford to make a misprediction with it, because you're gonna die to any attack in front of you, um, and if you can't kill something well, I mean, well, like, it's, it's annoying, right? So we're gonna think, what else can we use? We can't really use stuff like Mega Alakazam, because we already have the Mega Slot fulfilled, uh, Metagross doesn't really make sense because, again, we already have the Mega Slot fulfilled. Magirna is a decent wall breaker, but it doesn't really have, like, a, it doesn't really, you know, fulfill any spot on the team that would make it worth using. So, you know, we're looking around and say we use Genesec. Now, I know we said that we wanted something that could switch into Heatran, correct? But if we use a Life Orb Genesec, right? Okay, this gives us a couple of, um, you know, this gives us a couple of things. One, it gives us really nice, uh, wall breaking potential in general. Cores in general just fold to this thing. That's no surprise, right? So we run HP Ground, uh, which is obviously phenomenal at, you know, dealing with Heatran. I like this set a lot, HP Ground, because you get rid of Tran. Oh my god, not Grass, bro. Ground. You lure in Tran and knock that thing out, and it makes it very, very easy for Lele to sweep late game, and it also makes it easy for Venusaur to pretty much just whip teams around. Rarely is a team going to have Heatran and another Venusaur counter. Heatran's just the easiest one. Okay, so with that, there are a couple more options of what you can really run on your Genesect. So if we're going to be running the Mixed Life Orb set, meant to be wall breaking, we want to give it the maximum coverage to pretty much break through stuff. So the way I usually see this is, you're using Genesect to break through for Tapu Lele and Greninja, the faster, uh, arguably more stronger Pokemon as well. So, um, you know, what beats both of those? Well, bulky, specially defensive steel types like Ferrothorn can obviously be a bit of a nuisance because, you know, Tapu Lele has to wa uh, wall itself into HP Fire and that kind of thing. So, you know, you run Flamethrower, you know, to get rid of all those Ferrothorns and Skarms and all that good stuff. Um, also takes on bulkier grasses as well for Greninja. Uh, I mean, bulkier grasses aren't too much of a problem with Heatran and Venusaur, but I mean, you don't want to be forced out to begin with, especially on a team with no hazard removal such as this one. Um, another thing you can run is then um, Thunderbolt. I really like Thunderbolt on all my Genesects these days, just because it allows you to hit those bulky waters hard, stuff like Toxapex, Mantine, Tepufini, I don't like being forced out by those, it doesn't really make sense, you know, with a Pokemon like Genesect being forced out by those, so T-Bolt's really, really nice, because again, with Genesect, you don't want to, like, if you're being forced out with your Genesect, what does that say, like, it is the most broken Pokemon ever, and your opponent has something that can take it on, like, we even have HP ground for the Heatran, we're just trying to make the set that is just unwallable, and then the last move, the last move you can kind of toy around with. I have had success using Iron Head just because it can Oko Tapu Lele, uh, while the other three moves cannot, and it's just good insurance versus fairies in general. And if you get a plus one attack, it's just nice stab in general, has a good flinch chance, all that good stuff. It's a good set. So this is usually the set that's run uh, with a hasty nature. That way you can bluff E speed and plus you're going to run a minus uh, defense nature anyway because you're mixed. Um, so yeah, this would be the team basically. Like it looks very strong on paper. Um, it doesn't look like there's too many problems with it. Um, other than that, I mean, a lot of the things I said. Uh, with team building are still true from ORS. Like, let's count the number of immunities for Like, for example, uh, with most bulky offensive teams, you're gonna wanna have two sturdy water assists. That is a plus. I would listen into this uh, if you're watching the video. Well, I mean, you are if you're this, whatever. But you know what I'm trying to say. Two sturdy water assists. So, uh, Greninja is not what I would call the sturdiest of water resists, but Venusaur is a exceptionally sturdy water resist. Usually a team can be successful with stuff like Latios plus Rotom, where both are like just good water resists, but Venusaur is kind of like a great water resist, which kind of like makes it better to, uh, we also have Heatran, you know, which lures in a lot of water types and that kind of thing, so, I mean, the team could be wet better versus stuff like Ash Greninja, but it's not like a terrible, terrible matchup, and Venusaur kind of remedies the water resists. One to two fighting resists, that's not a problem here, we have Venusaur, Landers, and Lele to pretty much destroy all fighting types easily. Um, those are not a problem. Uh, one to two dragon resists or immunities, that's not a big deal either. We have Lele, Genesect, and Heatran. Um, other dragons that are even used are like Latios, which is blown away by Greninja and Genesect. Um, it's just like, yeah, most dragons. I guess 
Z Salamence could be a frustration, but Lander is just going to stone edge that thing anyway. Um, a flying check, which we have in Heatran, uh, but birds in general have been on the like the come down. Talon has been out of it. Um, Pinsir hasn't been used that much despite being very, very good, but whatever. Uh, ground resistor immunities are obviously important. We have Landers there, which is pretty much the best one. Uh, I guess the rest of the team is a tad ground weak, but I mean, we're using Venusaur as like a pseudo resist to everything. Um, and even then, Landers can pretty much fuck around with most uh, ground types. And then a dark resist. Now, the dark resist part, I mean, that's only really for Ash Greninja, but again, we have a lot of pressure on Venusaur. So I guess, I mean, resistance wise, the team has some decent ones, and there's some that it's lacking in, but it's not like terrible. Let me show you some other offensive kind of bulkier teams for reference. This is another team by CBB, which I've used in a live many times. Um, it's a very, very fun team. It's more on the offensive side than bulky offense, but I guess you can still constitute it as that just because Ferrothorn and Rotom are two very important pivots for offense. Um, I mean, for bulkier offensive teams, and it just works very, very well. Like, it has the proper key immunities. It has all sorts of offensive presence as well. Metagross, uh, Tapu Lele, and Heatran, you know, they form a nice 3 mon offensive core. And then you have Choice Bandit Zygarde, which not only is extremely fast, but is also hitting so hard with its broken move, Thousand Arrows. Like, it's very, very 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 nice what these can do um you know and then ferrothorn cbb is running a dual hazard set just to get those as much like get as many up as he can just so these things like lele and zygarde can have a much easier time sweeping with you know thousand arrows e speed or just you know scarf psychic in general uh immunity wise as we can see like it's not it's not too bad um it's pretty good in fact um like he has the necessary water resists rotom and ferrothorn are two good water resists so that's fine uh fighting resist wise he has lele i mean it could be better uh but like I mean, his team is so fast-paced to the point where he can kind of overcome a lot of these fighting-type Pokemon. Even Faramosa can't Oko, like, stuff like Metagross and Lele, so it's, like, not too big of a deal. Uh, he has enough Dragon Immunities, more than enough. Three Steel types and a Lele, like, that's that's perfect. Um, his Flying Checks, again, Rotom, Pasitran, that's enough. Uh, electric Checks, like, for, uh, what's it called, Coco, Tepu Coco and all that, that's also fine because he has Ferrothorn, um, which pretty much destroys all Tepu Cocos except for HP. Fire, in which case, like, if your HP fire is Zygarde walls you, and if your Dazzling Gleam HP fire, you're a bad set, so whatever. Um, ground resist, it's fine. Rotom plus max, I think he's max physical defense fair third, yeah, easily done, um, which is fine. And then, yeah, so, like, as you can see, the immunities are, like, well done on this team. Um, the only problem I can kind of see is, like, the lack of a dark resist, which, again, I don't like lack of a dark resist for stuff like Specs Greninja, but it's not a terrible deal just because, you know, he has this E-Speed, he has the Scarf Moonblast, uh, Ferrothorn and Rotom, you know, they're able to sponge the Dark Pulse. Uh, if they try to Dark Pulse Heatran for some reason, they're getting Bloom Doomed. Like, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, and I can show you another example, too. So this is probably one of my favorite teams in Gen 7 Pokebanko U right now. This team, I believe, ABR gave me with... Uh, Specs Ash Greninja. As you can see, it has no problem with the immunities. We have the good electric immunities in Among Amoongus Landers, Latios form a nice defensive core, even if Latios is Scarf offensive. Um, you know, the, it's fine. Like, stuff like uh, Specs Greninja also isn't too much of a threat because, you know, you have Tepu Coco and Amoongus that can come in. The Dragon Immunities part isn't too much of an issue as well. Um, it's I like this team a lot. It's been a lot of fun to use, and it's very, like, I guess easy to play. I mean, you have four Volt Turners and Bandit Genesect. Specs Greninja is obviously just busted at preview. Something I want to like make people realize in Sun Moon is that you can be creative. You can be really creative and a hundred times more creative than you could have been in Oras, and that's just so huge to me in this. That's why that's like the only reason I really like this meta is because you can still be extremely creative. Playing it is just kind of like, <laughs> but like you can be so creative in this meta, and that's why it's so much better. Like Z moves, for example, they completely change the game itself. Like Tornadus now beats Rotom. You just run Z Grass now, Bloom Doom, blow that thing away. Like stuff like that. Z Fly. Uh, elements like it's it's like you can be so much more creative in this game yes you're gonna need pivots yes the same big dogs are still around that you're gonna need to check but you can be creative while doing it like stuff like mantine is now like you know it's a good pokemon like there are so many options you can use for just like building in general like let me go like i can't even think of like a like the, let me just think of trying try to think of the new ones Hold on. okay i wasn't really sure what i was trying to say but like <laughs> But like there's just there's like a lot of new Pokemon in general that you can really use on these teams Like I said it before Magirna for example It's one of the new greatest pivots on offense because the assault vest set is so easy to switch into things Stuff like Buzzwool is extremely physically defensive. It also works. It's nice It checks a lot of things Star Flanders and that kind of thing um, It's just like a lot of Pokemon have risen crazy like Mega Metagross for example is extremely strong um, One of the most like it's definitely the hardest thing to do or one of the hardest things to switch into the meta um, and then you just have stuff that's like just new come threats. Manaphy at Rain Dance with the Z move. Obviously, that's like Manaphy was just decent back in uh, 
or S, now it's absolutely a king. Well, that set's also kind of overrated, but it's it's not bad. Hoopa, back in this bitch. That thing is crazy. Like, Tapu Fini is one of the biggest staples to offense at the moment because it can defog well, it can switch into everything. Taunt Nature Madness is really, really good. Um, and then some stuff in general has kind of fallen off, like Scissor, for example. Scissor is still fantastic. As you can see, the team in front of us basically just loses to Scissor. But Scissor's been on the drop too for some reason. I don't know. But like, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of things you can do in Sun and Moon, and people, I guess, just like think that like oh my god i need like marowak to counter all bug types plus like this plus this but like honestly like you can be really really creative in this gen i know the teams i showed were just two offensive teams and i kind of showed you just kind of and the team i built for example is already like a, a team that like i had i was just trying to show you the thought process behind it so i know maybe that didn't like help as much but like really what i just want to drill in from this video is just you can use a lot of things in this metagame and get away with it and be successful with it there's so i saw somebody win a game with z zygarde z block zygarde it gave him a plus one defense boost he blocked in I, I don't remember what he blocked in. It was some grass type. He blocked it in, and then he started setting up dragon dances, and he had the plus one defense so they couldn't break through him. He had a rest as well, so he just set up to plus six, swept a thousand arrows clean. Z block gives the plus one defense. Like, who thinks of that? There's so many things you can do in this metagame to change it up. Stuff like Bisharp, for example, is completely slept on. Look at this team in, in front of us. Bisharp obliterates it. The team we made in the beginning, Bisharp obliterates that team. People be sleeping, dude. Like, there's a lot of different things you can do. Like, Z, uh, free shot, Kieran Black. That thing obliterates this team, too. Like, it's. You can do a lot. Rain, for example, is still busted. It's like that's 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 all I'm trying to say. Just you can do so much in this metagame. Like, don't think that you can. You just need like the specific thing. And I've seen a lot of people innovating. It's been cool. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I want to end the video off with. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was just a little bit helpful, um, if anything. And uh, yeah, leave a like if you did. Later, y'all.